Let's start at the beginning. Loading files. There are many different ways to load images into Aurora HDR, and I'd like to walk you through some of the options. We'll start with the most simple, loading a single file. If you've launched Aurora HDR, simply choose File Open. Or if it's an image you've recently worked with, you'll find it under the Open Recent menu. When you choose Open, you'll need to navigate to the file that you want. In this case, I'm going to choose to open up a single image. Now, I've saved this image as both a TIFF and a RAW file. My preference is to work with the RAW file, but we'll start by opening up this TIFF. When I choose Open, it reads the image in and shows me what's happening. Now, there's a checkbox here for tone mapping. What this allows you to do is to open the image as is or to ask Aurora HDR to try to analyze the image and find more details in the shadows and highlights. Let's tell it to create the HDR here from the already processed TIFF. Additionally, I'll open up the RAW file so you can compare. File, Open, and I'll choose the RAW image and make sure to take advantage of the option here for tone mapping. Additionally, under the gear icon here, you'll see a couple of options when you open up a RAW file. One of those is the ability to do color denoise, and the other is to remove chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration tends to appear in high contrast areas. Now, many zoom lenses are more susceptible to this. The more pieces of glass in the lens, the more likely you're going to see aberration. And what happens is, is it results in either a purple, a cyan, or a green fringe around some of the edges in high contrast areas. In this particular image, we've got a really high contrast area here where these different pieces in this old armory at a fort are really cut into by the bright sunlight here. This is an armory on one of the islands in St. Croix. And what's happening is we're taking a look at some old elements here that were used to prepare and service the cannons on the fort. And in this case, one of the portholes on the side of the fort has got bright sunlight pouring into this very dark room. So I'll take advantage of chromatic aberration reduction. Let's go ahead and create the HDR. And it will analyze that raw file and open it up. If we take a look here at the raw image, it did a pretty good job of handling the different details. I do have a little lens flare here from the super bright light directly hitting the camera, but if I take advantage of recovering highlights, you see that there's a lot of detail there that can still be brought back. We can lift the shadows a bit, put a little bit of high dynamic range in there and some contrast, and this allows us to really control what's coming through in the image and that helps. Now, we'll revisit this shot a little bit later with brackets, but you see here, it's still doing a pretty good job of bringing out some of those details. If I take a look at some of my presets, just as a quick jumpstart category, I'll take a look here at the realistic HDR category. And what you'll see is that this allows us to get quite a bunch of detail back in. I love how some of the details here in the brick and the overhead archways here are just bringing back some of the textures, plus the metal textures coming back to life. Those feel really good to me. And if I put a little bit of tone in there and a little bit of contrast and the HDR enhance, that really comes through nicely if you compare the before and the after. I just love how the richness here is coming through in the ceiling and in this pillar. If we switch back to the TIFF file and take a look at some of these same presets, it too does a nice job of bringing out that texture, but if we punch in here to the really bright areas and try to recover those, you'll see that while it's able to bring back some of the details, you just don't have as much flexibility when not working with a raw source file. If you want to work with Aurora HDR in single images, that's absolutely fine. A lot of people use it as a plugin from tools like Photoshop or Lightroom to enhance a single image. It's great at bringing out depth and detail. My personal preference, and what I'm going to show you the most in the rest of this course, is working with brackets. But as you see here, single files are fine, particularly if they're single RAW files. When you open up that RAW file, though, make sure you take advantage of those key options. Remember, in the open dialog, choose the tone mapping option, as well as from the gear icon here, choose to remove any color noise from the RAW file, and if the scene has a lot of contrast to it, 
particularly with a backlit subject, choose the chromatic aberration option. Now, when you create the HDR image and open up that RAW file, you're gonna get a pretty good HDR file to work with. A lot of detail can be brought out and you'll be able to get great depth and tone. Now, what you've seen here is a very good workflow. However, I wanna show you working with a bracketed image, which I think is a good deal better. 